Good evening, black people and all allies fighting for black liberation, black prosperity, and black joy. I'm Charles Blow, and welcome to Prime. Will Governor Gavin Newsom stay, or will he go? Polls close about an hour in California where voters will decide Newsom's fate. The first-term Democratic governor could become just the second governor in state history to be recalled. If the recall fails and at least 50% of Californians vote no, Newsom is safe. But anything below that mark and he's out, and Larry Elder could become California's first black governor. The Republican conservative radio host is leading the pack of 46 candidates vying for Newsom's seat. The results could be one of the first real indicators of how steady blue state America is since President Biden took office. We're going to change California. In fact, we're going to change the world. We're all going to do this together. We may have defeated Donald Trump, but we have not defeated Trumpism. Trumpism is still on the ballot in California. BNC correspondent Walter Morris joins us in Los Angeles with more on this historic election. Walter, what are you seeing on the ground there as polls are about to close? Well, Charles, as you mentioned, in less than an hour, polls close here in the state of California, and that's when we'll get a much better idea on those official numbers on turnout. But just anecdotally from what we've seen talking to poll workers here and at other locations, they say the turnout has been consistent. In fact, at one location, a poll worker I spoke with saying they were surprised by just how many people have been showing up. And of course, that is what the Newsom campaign wanted. I had a chance to speak with some members of the Newsom campaign yesterday. And they said they believe this election will really come down to turnout. Of course, California is a deep blue state, but they need those voters to show up and be engaged. And so far, from what we can tell, they have been. Now, voters we've spoken with throughout the day, particularly black voters, uh, really have been focused on some of those bread and butter issues. We're talking criminal justice reform, climate change, and women's rights. And of course, Republican frontrunner Larry Elder. Now, over the last few weeks, the Newsom campaign has really shifted the messaging leaning into the pandemic as well as the Delta surge, but also going after Elder. Uh, last night, the president calling him a Donald Trump clone. And from what we can tell of those voters we've spoken with, that has really hit home. Now, over the last few weeks, the Newsom campaign has really ramped up their efforts to get those voters uh, to the polls, to wait in line, to drop off their ballots in person. And to do that, they've called in some really heavy hitters in the Democratic Party. We're talking Senators Elizabeth Warren, Amy Klobuchar, Bernie Sanders. Last week, Vice President Kamala Harris rallying in Northern California and yesterday capping it all off the president rallying with Governor Newsom in Long Beach, California. Uh, but it remains to be seen if that will do the trick to get voters to the polls or to get Newsom to keep his job. And we will know in about an hour when polls close at 8 p.m. Charles. Walter Morris, thanks so much for that report. Congresswoman Barbara Lee joins us now for more on the coverage from California and the recall. Congresswoman Lee, what do you expect to happen? tonight. Well, thank you very much, Charles. Uh, and let me just say, it's been all hands on deck for a heck of a long time. And if we vote, we win. We've been fighting against this recall from day one. And I believe that uh, when you look at the turnout for a recall election, uh, people are voting. Uh, Democrats are voting. This is a blue state. But also, when people began to realize and understand that this is a very undemocratic process. When you can have a recall, for example, uh, someone beat back the recall, no on the recall, like 49.9%, and someone on the ballot, i.e. Larry Elder, could win with 10% of the vote. I mean, that is just outrageous. And so black people understand that. We're smart voters. And uh, I'm, I'm convinced that if we get all our votes in, uh, the recall will be defeated. Biden was in California last night campaigning with Newsom. Do you think that the, this election will in part be a referendum on Biden himself, or is it just a referendum on, on Newsom? Well, I think what this election will show is that Governor Newsom has saved lives and livelihoods in California. And because this 
coronavirus pandemic has been deadly, especially in African-American communities and communities of color. Uh, I think people understand what's taking place. They know what's taking place in Florida. They know what's taking place in Mississippi and other states. And they know that uh, because of the governor's uh, tough love and because he initiated and executed the actions that he did, that he has saved uh, many, many lives. And so I think that's what's on the ballot now is really saying that, yes, uh, Governor Newsom, you have uh, helped save lives and livelihoods uh, in the state of California, and we do not want a governor who is going to deny that the coronavirus is deadly, who's going to say that uh, vaccines may or may not work, and who's going to not really care about people in terms of their jobs, in terms of their businesses, and in terms of, of their uh, just ability to lead, lead their lives. And African Americans are, of course, disproportionately impacted here in California by the virus. And, and so I believe that that's what's on the ballot. And uh, people know and they've seen how the governor has made sure that California uh, led in crushing this virus. Republicans from the president on down to Larry Elder himself have suggested that if Elder is unsuccessful, and that will be because there was some sort of, you know, cheating in the uh, uh, in the in the election. That the election will not be have been fair. Will not be legitimate. This is the same thing that Trump did on the national stage. How kind of corrosive and damaging could it be to electoral politics in the state of California if the people who lose this election do not believe that it was lost fairly? Yeah, Charles. The one the president himself says, Larry Elder and Donald Trump who are trying to make this part of their narrative of the big lie. And so they're setting it up. <laughs> they're just trying to say and make people believe that there's voter fraud and that uh, there have been shenanigans so that they can say this is another election that was stolen. Black people know better than that. And we're voting. There's no voter fraud. We have very good voter uh, participation and in terms of uh, secure voter security. And so this is their playbook. This is what they're using nationally. But we're not going to buy that in California. Do you believe that, that that Elder will pick up a disproportionate number of black voters more than maybe Trump would have just because he is a black man running in this race? Let's hope not. Uh, I think, as I said, black people are smart people. <laughs> we can see right through uh, Larry Elder. I mean, just look at some of the things he has said. One example, California, I'm so proud of the fact that it's the first state to establish a task force to study and develop reparations to repair the damage of systemic racism and what took place in terms of the enslavement of Africans uh, in America. Uh, Larry Elder says, well, you know, the slave owners should be paid reparations. So I think, you know, his outrageous views and attitudes uh, are such that I don't, I don't know how any black person, and I don't believe many black people will vote for Larry Elder because he is black. They can see, we can see right through that. Uh, so, when, so when Biden calls Larry Elder a clone of Donald Trump, you think that that actually resonates and sticks and that that is a kind of a, a turning point tactic in the, in the last stretch of the election that will actually make you know, black people get black people in, you know, California voters writ large get out to the polls and actually fight this back. Well, I think black people know that he's part of the Trump orbit. He's got the same attitudes of Donald Trump in terms of uh, trying to turn the back clock back to the days of Jim Crow. I think black people understand that what Larry Elder stands for is Trumpism. And, and so you have a Larry Elder in California politics trying to bring Trumpism into a blue state trying to be uh, a, a governor who's going to uh, really turn the cl clock back for African Americans. I believe that we know and we see very good and well that he's part of the Trump uh, machine. Uh, he's part of what uh, makes Donald Trump with some circles and some circles uh, be popular. And he's in many ways mimicking uh, many of Donald Trump's views and attitudes and sometimes even goes further. And when you look at just his history with women, when you look at, I mean, he's very, his behavior and his background is very similar to Donald Trump's. I want to shift gears just a little bit. Today actually marks the 20th anniversary of when you were the lone vote in Congress 
against the war in Afghanistan. 20 years later, where does your bill to repeal the authorization for use of military force stand? Well, thank you, Charles. Yes, 20 years I knew that uh, the 60-word authorization, it was a blank check that gave any president the authority to use force in perpetuity, any president, and that that took Congress out of our, respons our constitutional responsibility to authorize or declare war. And having said that, I've been trying <laughs> to repeal this authorization for many years. Right now, and it has been in the House bills, uh, passed. But, of course, in the Senate, uh, we couldn't get it passed in the Senate. But we're working now, once again, to pass my, uh, my repeal authorization that repeals the 2001 and gives the president eight months while it's in place to come up with a new one. So we're working with a variety of members of Congress from different points of view to try points of views to try to get this ready to get to the floor. We did repeal in the House the 2002 authorization which was the Iraq authorization, which was based on the lies that there were weapons of mass destruction in Iraq, and we know there weren't, which was the basis, which included 2001 in the uh, language of the 2002. We passed that with over 40 Republican votes in the House recently. Now it's on the Senate floor. We got it out of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, and Senator Kane is working with us uh, in the Senate to get the, the 2002 passed. And President Biden, when I brought that one to the floor a few, a few months ago, he issued a statement of administration policy saying he supported it and would sign it if it gets to his desk. Congresswoman Barbara Lee, thank you so much for your time tonight. Really appreciate it. We'll keep our eyes on what's happening in California. Democrats seem terrified to tax the rich. Buckle up. Dr. Cornell West puts it all in perspective next on Prime. You're watching ENC.